Hello, hello, and welcome. Welcome back to Space Engineers on the Xbox on the Series X. And we are diving into yet another Space Engineers video on an aspect of the game that I see a lot of people ask about. And it's possible on the Xbox without the use of a sub grid controlling script to get a basic VTOL system working. This may all change with the advent of Grid AI. If you haven't seen the teaser that Keen Software posted of the Rube Goldberg machine, look it up on Twitter and the official Space Engineers page because it teases some of the features that are coming with Grid AI. This includes things like being able to detect when a hydrogen tank is full on a grid and trigger another part of the grid or potentially another grid to do something else and there are lots of things going on in that video that demonstrate just one very small aspect of grid ai and if we can believe some of the rumors flitting about uh, the next month or so are going to be very interesting for the game i will be doing a lot of videos on grid ai as i dive into it myself as I start to take it to bits and look at various aspects of it. And I will, as always, break it down as simple as possible. Talking of breaking things down as simple as possible, welcome to my tutorial on how to build a very simple vertical takeoff and landing VTOL grid. We will start by placing one block. We'll pop it here onto this block for this grid we're going to need at least some way shape or form of controlling said grid and we're also going to need some power for said grid and we're going to go for just um, a battery so that we can at least get some power going on in the cockpit so, how do we do this? Well, it uses two hinges and three merge blocks. And the way I like to do it is to drop down a hinge. Let's just find my hinges. There they are. And when you put your hinges down, if you look at them, you'll see there's a little thing at the top there that shows you where the upper limit is. So when you drop it down, just pop in this first hinge into the control panel while you've got nothing else and just basically call it hinge um, lock one or something along those lines, just to differentiate it from everything else. And then go down to it, and you want to turn the hinge lock on it on. To this, we are going to add another hinge. Like so. That's two hinges. So with the two hinges in position, again, going to this hinge, on the control panel and you'll see it's just called hinge now we want to call this hinge v t o l one the reason i say one is if you're doing like a ship with two vtols one left one right one port one starboard then you want to do just that now with this we can do a couple of things. One thing, we can set the velocity on this to five. So tap the button once, tap it again, and type five in the box. Press OK. And you'll see that it goes down. That's because what we want is we want the lower limit to zero and the upper limit on this to 90 the time being let's jump back into here and you'll see that our 
systems are there. So we're just going to put on this shortcut by holding down on the D-pad until the toolbar config menu opens up. And now you can see why I renamed the hinges so I know which hinge is which. So hinge, VTOL1, reverse. And you'll see that our hinge goes from zero degrees to 90 degrees. So far, so good. On to this. We are now going to start looking at how we're going to do our VTOL. Now, when you're using merge blocks, if any part of the grid, such as a block, armor block, or whatever, is touching our main grid, when that merge block locks, every block attached will merge, and that's it. They'll merge for good. You won't ever be able to merge them. You'll have to break them down, grind them down, or whatever. So, what we need to do is pick something like a conveyor junction. Don't use this one. And use the, con the curved conveyor tube, because if you're going to use hydrogen engines, remember, if you're using hinges, then hydrogen will flow through. This, you can use any of the types. You could use the curved one from the heavy industry, or... You can do this one. Then, just to make it even more obvious, we're going to throw another block here. Like so. And then, what we want to do is we want to have a look at yet a, let's see, another block here like so. And we are going to put in, if we can slide it in here, and this is the next part of the... Oop, I think I've gone too far. I can never remember where these things are because this thing changes all the time. There it is. We want... Oh, we want... There we go. Merge block. Now you'll see... And we've got a bit of a problem. We can't actually fit that there. Or can we? Let's see. It might just fit. Yeah, it did. Okay, that's good. So now what we want is, before we do anything else, this is our most important merge block. So we want to rename this so we know where it is. Again, if you're doing more than one engine, name them one, two, three, four, or whatever, because you'll be able to link them up into a group and move them all at once. And just to check things are moving, we're good. So now, what we're going to do here is we are going to add our fun time Atmo Thruster. Do I like it there or not? Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to... Yeah, that's better. So now, you can see that is basically the system for making your VTOL swing up and down. Now, one block up from here to begin with. So on one block up from here, what we want to do
is go to our light armor blocks, come down, come up one block, delete this block, and put in a merge. Now, you know the rule with subgrids. You can not trigger the thrusters at all. Like this. No matter what I do. So if I go to my thing, remember I said merge block VTOL. Toggle the block on and off. And so we can see it turns on and off. If I now swing that arm down, you'll see our merge block turns green and locks. Now you can see our vertical takeoff thruster actually triggers. Let's just unlock that merge block and just swiftly move the VTOL up. Pull back a bit. And you'll see nothing. So, looking at this grid, looking where we are, we want just to mark where we're going to put our merge block underneath and swing our VTOL on there. Let me get rid of that. I want to put that there and we want to slap another merge block in like so now when we flick our VTOL arm and turn our merge block back on it will lock to the grid and now when we push forward on the stick we have thrust forward Unlock, swing, lock, thrust, unlock, swing, lock, forward thrust. And that is how you make a simple VTOL engine that actually works. And the reason it works, because Space Engineers is weird is that it is two subgrids apart at any one time from the main grid and the merge block will lock if you just use one hinge that merge block will never lock and neither will this one and that is your very simple VTOL now if you're going to build one properly into a ship or whatever bear in mind that this VTOL itself is not going to be enough thrust to actually fully lift. Use it as a supplementary thrust or build a system to sort of do that. So here's one. Here, you'll see if I come round here. Box the landing gear. And on the engines. notice that the VTOL engines aren't functioning this is because again space engineers being weird won't turn them on until you just lock the merge block you have they, there they are you can see the vertical take off the landing so just won't turn them on until you've locked and unlocked from the grid it can be a bit weird like that, physics-wise. May all change when Keen updated again. Uh, it could change with Grid AI. Don't know whether or not they're going to change any kind of physics functions. But that is your basic VTOL. And if I shift off my system, you'll see there's no clang. And now you can see the thrusters on the VTOL doing their job. Unlock, swing, lock. Thrusters doing their job again. 
and I'm using no down thrusters because I'm on a planet with gravity. So easier to crawl. But yeah, that is your basic VTOL system. And all I did with the hinges and the merge blocks is I grouped them together in the toolbar configure menu using the control panel and uh, if you don't know how to do that just look through my videos I've got plenty of videos on how that's done and you can see here that I have hinge, hinge 2, hinge T1 and hinge T2 these are the important ones and these link to a group up here where I've got thrusters, V-hinge, VTOL, which is the two hinges that swing at the same time, and then your thrusters. And that's all that you need to make a VTOL system for space engineers. There you go. Hopefully, you'll be able to replicate this on your ships. Feel free to uh, drop a comment and let me know how you get on. And hopefully, I've uh, removed one of the headaches of the game for you. This system uh, took a little bit to track down uh, because I'd um, been trying to use just one hinge. But when I remembered I used two hinges for my airlock that uh, locks on the other video i thought why not try the same trick with this and it turns out that after flicking through various videos this seems to be one of the universal ways to do it on uh, xbox and also without scripting on pc so uh, it's genius anyway that's all i've got time for Stay safe, take care, have fun, enjoy the game. Grid AI is closer than ever, as I said at the start of the video. Check out the Rube Goldberg video that Space Engineers posted. Got lots of interesting things going on in the background. Uh, thanks again for the likes. Please subscribe when we hit 2,000 subscribers. Myself and Paul, uh, Butcherboy Toma Thompson, will be releasing the Star Wars all-terrain armoured transport, and this thing that Paul has created, will be updated as time goes on too, once we've uh, got Grid AI. I'm sure he's going to be using a lot of those systems to help rebalance mechs and all sorts. The Jaeger will probably get an update, you name it. But yes, drop by, please subscribe, and help me push to this 2,000 mark. I don't normally do this, but uh, that's what the reward is the ATAT, -AT. and as always I will leave a link to that one at the end of this video. I've said enough, bye for now.